Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What are you thankful for? It's a question that by this time tomorrow will probably be asked around countless tables in our country. Your family may even have the tradition where you go around to each person at the table and have each person tell at least one thing that they're thankful for this year. Our church family shares that tradition, and you can see our responses posted on the wall out there in the narthex from our Thanksgiving feast last weekend. Thankfulness is what today, and especially tomorrow, are all about. Which is why we have the gospel reading for today that we do. Every Thanksgiving, we gather to hear about Jesus healing the ten lepers, and how after he healed them, only one of them came back to give thanks. You have indeed heard, and I have indeed preached many times about how we should be like that one Samaritan leper that returned to give thanks and praise God for his great blessings. And I suppose today won't be that much different. But it's easy to be thankful today. And even easier to be thankful tomorrow. Just like it's often easier to be generous and charitable at Christmas. After all, it's what's expected of us. It's what we do. Everything that we see and hear during these seasons reinforce those themes. I'm not saying that we should all be cynical and go around like ungrateful curmudgeons for the holidays. In fact, the increased gratitude of Thanksgiving and the rampant goodwill of Christmas is a rather welcome respite from the meanness of the norm and day-to-day -day life. I'm merely pointing out that we all know what is expected of us and how we are to act during these times of the year. And so tonight we gather together and we all hear the story of those ten lepers once again and we nod along thinking, yeah, those ungrateful wretches. Why couldn't they be like that Samaritan? How could they be so thoughtless? But before we judge those nine too harshly, let's think about what was really in store for them. Sure, their leprosy was cured, but that didn't fix all their problems. They had been outcasts for society, probably for years, most likely, living on the outskirts of the town, begging for their food and supplies, and nobody could visit them, lest they be declared unclean. They had to leave their families, their homes, their jobs, being cured of their diseases didn't bring back any of those things. Sure, they were to go to the priests, be declared clean, and then be allowed to return to normal society. But return to what, exactly? Sure, maybe some of them had families that would welcome them back with thanksgiving, prepare them a great feast, and fix them up in a room with a comfy bed. Maybe some of them had job connections and they could start working to earn a living right away. Perhaps some of them had only recently contracted the disease and only been away for a few weeks or a few months so they could easily transition back to a formal way of life. Maybe those things happened. But maybe they didn't. I imagine that many of those lepers did not find their homecoming so joyous. After visiting the priests, I imagine that some of them went home to find that their homes had been sold, their land confiscated, or auctioned off for unpaid bills. Those that did have families may have returned home to find that their bedroom had been turned into a storage room, that their kids had grown up. Perhaps their grandparents had passed away. Some of them may have even returned home to find that their betrothed had not waited for them, but instead moved on and married another. More than a few of those lepers probably found themselves right back to where they started, 
homeless, broke, and alone. But hey, at least they had their health, right? Yeah, I'm sure that brought them a ton of comfort as they looked around for a place on the cold street to spend the night as their first night as a healed and healthy man. Imagine if you had walked up to him and said, Happy Thanksgiving! What are you thankful for? He probably would have told you to go take a hike. Or perhaps something worse. We Americans all have these images of Thanksgiving in idyllic Norman Rockwell type settings. You've probably seen the picture. Everyone gathered around the table, laughing joyfully as mother brings out that perfectly roasted giant bird. That's the way we may picture it. But reality is often much different. It may be Thanksgiving, but grandma, she's still got cancer. Grandpa's still gone. Dad is still unemployed. Your brother is getting a divorce. Your nephew Johnny is still stuck in juvie. Your daughter can't wait to get out of this boring family stuff and go hang out with their friends. And your son is selling methamphetamine on the side to supplement his college party fund. Your water heater went out two days ago. You've used up all of your emergency funds. You can't find affordable health insurance. You can barely afford the turkey that's sitting on your table. Your boss is a jerk, and you had to lie in order to get today off. And you go to bed every night, hoping that something will happen to make things better. But every morning you wake up, and you find things are exactly the same. Happy holidays. What are you thankful for? We're supposed to ignore all of that hardship, right? We're supposed to pretend like everything is okay because it's a holiday. We're supposed to act like a family. Treat each other better than we normally might. Because it's Thanksgiving, after all. That's what we're supposed to do, right? Not at all. Take the Samaritan. I would bet that that Samaritan leper had no delusions about the struggle that was ahead of him following that day. Sure, with a shared disease, the Jewish lepers, who had always looked down on the Samaritans, had welcomed him into their little group. But now that they were all healed, those old distinctions and old prejudice would arise once again. Even Christ's command to go and show yourself to the priest effectively excluded this Samaritan. Historically, when the Jews returned from the Babylonian captivity, the Samaritans offered to help them rebuild their temple. But the Jewish leaders refused. And so the Samaritans then terrorized the building efforts, delaying the completion of that temple. Then once they were excluded from the Jewish temple, the Samaritans eventually built their own temple on nearby Mount Gerizim. And then they rewrote the Bible to say that their temple was the only one that God instituted. So by the time of Jesus... That Samaritan temple, it still lay in ruins from Alexander the Great. And Samaritans were still forbidden to participate in the Jewish temple worship. That means this Samaritan leper had no place to go. He had no priest to show himself to, no one to declare him cleansed and declare to his community that he was ready and allowed to re-enter society. Sure, he had his health, but his hardships, they would still continue. And yet, through it all, this is the one who still finds reason to be thankful. 
Thanksgiving is not about ignoring our hardships in order to be thankful. Rather, it's about being thankful in spite of our hardships. Our Lord knows our lives. He knows suffering and He knows hurt. If your family and your life are perfect, then Jesus really isn't the Savior for you. If your life looks like a Norman Rockwell painting, your life doesn't comprehend Jesus. Norman Rockwell painted thousands of subjects and scenes throughout his career. But to my knowledge, he never once painted the crucifixion of our Lord. Probably because there ain't no way to make that scene pretty. And that's really who Jesus is. Jesus is a savior for the broken. He's a God who gets down in the muck and dirt of real human life. He's often more at home amongst the homeless than he is with those with white picket fences. He's often more secure with the Samaritans than he is poised with the people in power. Our God would rather be at your house as you mutter your table prayer over mere turkey sandwiches than he would want to be at the home with six different kinds of heritage birds where the people can't even recall the words to come Lord Jesus. That's because Jesus is a savior for sinners. He is a God for the meek, the terrified, the exasperated, and those broken under the weight of daily life in this world and burdened by their own sin. That is where our God is pleased to dwell. That is where our God makes his home. I would love to stand up here and preach to you some fire and brimstone today to tell you that you better give thanks for all the things that God has given to you or he might just take them all away. But that message isn't in our gospel reading for today. Instead, in our gospel reading, we find only gospel. Christ only gives. He gives to those lepers. He only provides. He has compassion upon them. He heals them. He doesn't condemn them. He doesn't command them. He doesn't even tell them about their sins. That Samaritan already knew the consequences of his sin. It was right there in front of him. A broken body, a broken world, a broken future. His whole life was steeped in the law. It was saturated in sin. And Christ knows this. And so he gives him only gospel. Speaks to him only of forgiveness and faith. And so for us also this day. We know the consequences of our sin. We live with them each and every day. Broken bodies. Broken relationships. A broken world. Broken family. A broken future. Yet, once again, Christ comes and makes his home with us in that brokenness. And he comes preaching grace and mercy, giving forgiveness and daily bread, saying, here, eat this, it is given for you. Here, drink this, it's shed for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins, for the healing of all of your brokenness. And then go in peace. Your faith has made you well. What are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Jesus is our answer. And that may sound hokey to those who just don't get it. But Jesus is the heart of everything that we are thankful for. For our lives are not perfect. Our families are not perfect. Our relationships are not perfect. We are not perfect. 
We don't live in a Norman Rockwell type of world. Instead, we live in a world that is rife with sin and suffering, that is broken at every turn. And yet we take heart. In fact, we rejoice. Because this is where Jesus is also at home. This life, this world, is where Jesus turns things glorious. That is what the Samaritan discovered that day. That despite all of the hardships that were in front of him, he could still give thanks. And so he returned and fell down at the Lord's feet. And so you too, even as you give thanks for broken homes and broken lives, you can know that Jesus is all that you really need. For in him, all things hold together. So that whether you are in plenty or in want, you can rejoice in all things through him who gives you strength. Amen and happy Thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus Christ, our only hope in this life and the next. Amen.